Thank you, Madam Chair. I also want to uh, acknowledge this bipartisan effort and appreciate the impact it will have on continuing education uh, across the country in Michigan. I'm proud to support a vote for the Strengthening Career and Technical Education for the 21st Century Act uh, Committee today. Prior to serving in Congress, I dedicated a 35-year career to workforce education, helping people develop skills necessary to get good jobs and start a career path. There's something about the pride that comes from someone who secures a job that they've been preparing for. Their whole world changes when they see what they can achieve and what the work does for their family. I ran for Congress with the hope of making that opportunity possible for more Americans. In efforts to assess the needs of our education system over the last several months, I've met with students, administrators, teachers, and employers throughout my district. Collectively, they painted a clear picture. The problem is rigid curriculum that does not consider the needs of the local economy has led to a skills gap. There's a serious problem in which employers are unable to find qualified individuals to fill up with jobs and to grow. Meanwhile, many young people are unable to find jobs they lack the necessary education and skills. Every employer I met with in the last four months has told me the same thing. They struggle to find individuals that possess core technical skills. Despite expensive recruiting efforts, they aren't able to find people to grow when they're turning down work. Our school systems recognize this problem too, but far too often their hands are tied to, need, to addressing student, arbitrary student standards and testing metrics, rather than ensuring they're meeting the needs in the community. School leaders throughout my district over the last several months have been uniform about one thing. They need flexibility to address choices for students and families to develop skills to meet the needs of employers and, frankly, for the 21st century. Part of the problem is on the federal level, which I believe we begin to address today. The other part is on a state level, and I intend to work with my counterparts in Michigan to improve our nation's career and technical education offerings. We must update the Perkins Career and Technical Education Act to better meet the needs of students and employers. It's clear in Michigan, the results are demonstrated. Nearly 108,000 Michigan high school students benefit from career and technical education coursework. Students participating in CTE are significantly more likely to earn a diploma than their peers. Today's legislation will give flexibility that the community and educational leaders have been asking for. It allows states to better accommodate local workforce needs. It simplifies the application process for schools seeking funds to, to spend their time, rather than spend their time designing programs to meet federal requirements to meet the needs of the workforce. It encourages better partnerships between employers, educators, and the community. It also has increased the amount of funding that can be set aside to assist eligible students in rural areas from 10 to 15% better assisting areas like my district, Michigan's 10th Congressional District. And it also increases transparency by establishing a public review process of performance with input from educators, parents, students, and employers, something which, as you know, I'm a big fan of. School students and parents have made it abundantly clear current technical ed can be improved by making it more relevant to students, ensuring programs are accountable, involving all stakeholders, and granting more local flexibility and control. Today's legislation achieves those goals. I'm proud to support it and we'll continue to work with the committee to, to move this forward. Thank you very much, and I yield back.